The holy river Ganges, believed to flow from heaven itself, a river inspiring such devotion that many have made pilgrimages along its entire length. The traditional starting point of these journeys is Ganga Sagar, where the Ganges meets the ocean. And to this day, the local fisherfolk watch pilgrims set off, sent on their way by a priest's ancient blessing. A good luck mark on the forehead, and for good measure, on the foreheads of their boats as well. A sacred coconut broken to invoke the protection of the gods. And now the long journey can begin. The short ocean passage is safely underway. Ahead now, the river month, and eight weeks of adventure for Hilary and his companions. There's the chance they may glimpse one of the world's rarest animals, the tiger. In all of India, just 2,000 survive, many of them seeking sanctuary here in this wilderness. Fleetingly, it had come their way, a rare and beautiful sight, one of the last of the tigers. <laughs> Calcutta, just beyond the delta, home of eight million people. The news of the expedition has brought the city to the river. In three jet-powered boats, Everest hero Sir Edmund Hillary and his 19-member team are currently on a cultural pilgrimage on the holy river Ganga. At Calcutta, Sir Hillary and his team are given a rousing reception. Such scenes would follow them all the way upriver, at every town and refueling stop. Part of the attraction was Hillary, part the boats, but more than anything, it was excitement about the journey itself. These amazing scenes made me realise as never before how much our journey meant to these people. That to them it really was the ultimate journey, a pilgrimage up the river they loved. And more than ever, we were beginning to share their excitement. What a mighty river she is, brimming over with monsoon flood, altering course at will, turning hills into islands. A vast expanse, in places six miles wide, but also in places just inches deep, for the river is studded with sandbars, Sandbars into which a boat could crash, and the muddy waters give no warning of where these might be. We ran hard aground at least once a day. At 30 miles an hour, it was like hitting a brick wall. It was a shock to find that Mingma, one of my two Sherpas, had gone flying into the windscreen, badly cutting his lip. It certainly did little to diminish his distrust of boats and rivers. Got to go that way and drop right off out there. You ready to drop right off?
Each day, after about 80 miles of travel, they call a halt and camp, often beside a village, dwelling for a night where man has dwelt for thousands of years. Here at Benares, their halfway point, the local people have asked a priest to bless their journey again. The offerings are many. Flowers, the sacred flame, the water of the Ganges, and lamp boats carrying prayers to the gods for their safety in the waters ahead. Onwards they journey, day after day, never wearying of the river and its people. Past Hindu temples, like Jangira, perched on its granite island. Sometimes beneath the blackness of a monsoon thunderstorm ever onwards through this timeless land. And day by day, their excitement grows as they approach the foothills of the Himalayas. <laughs> 